Mike, turn your games down. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another What Are You Playing episode of Games My Mom Found for December. I am Mike Elverton, and who is with me tonight? Michael Hughes. Blake England. And welcome, both of you. Welcome back to another, yeah. another What Are You Playing? And first, we'll just, start every episode. <laughs> what Are You Playing? <laughs> so what have you been playing, Mike? Uh, well, since the last time I was on one of these, I think it was October's. I finished I the, the backlog bingo card, which is cool. Took me seven months to do the 49 squares because I have no life. <laughs> How long will it take you for next one? <laughs> oh, yeah, that one's going to take a while. They added a couple of... Uh, there's at least two different 100% a game. One of them is JRPG, so that's going to take a minute. Depends it's on what gonna, you play. Yeah, that's true. I've been trying to do some research to find something in the middle ground. But I'm sure, since I'm sure I need to fill the... Oh, trigger. Yeah. They shouldn't play through there. Yeah. Since I need to fill the uh, the the coming weeks until January, just so I could start that one, I've been doing. Uh, they posted a Mario Bingo card in 2020, so I've been playing through like a stupid amount of Mario games the last couple weeks. <laughs> Did Mario Land one and two, New Super Mario Brothers one and two, Mario Brothers two and three, 64 DS, which is shit. Mario Kart eight, 3D Land, and a couple that I really wanted to talk about. I got Mario Maker two. Have you guys played the? Well, I know Mike hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that someone made New Super Mario Brothers 5? They made 45 courses across eight worlds, and it plays like an actual Mario game. Oh, it's pretty cool. That is that yeah, sounds Mario cool. It was uh, it was going around probably some time this fall. So I'm like, oh, I got to try that. It's pretty neat. It's it was worth picking up Mario Maker for. I'm sure I'll play it again at some point. That makes me happy if someone did something like that. Yeah, Nintendo sure not. Nintendo don't care. <laughs> Like, I'm looking up a video right now. It looks like Mario Brothers 3. Yeah, it kind of it jumps back and forth between Mario World and Mario 3. Oh, that's cool. There's one stage where it plays like Mario 2 and another one where you can get the... Uh, and it's not the Fire Flower, I forget what it's called in Mario Land, where you get the Super Ball. Was it hard? Uh, yeah. Not really. A couple of the later stages, like, as you expect with Mario. And I'm definitely what? finding that out, playing all these old ones. Like, I kind of go back and forth between I am a gamer god and... God damn, how did I play these when I was a kid? That's a guy. The thing that's that is not what it used to be. Yeah, that's true. My reflexes are, uh, yeah, they're gone. <laughs> the right other here. one I, want, I wanted to mention was uh, Mario World, the GBA version. I think it's like Super Mario Advance 2 or whatever. <laughs> yes. But it lets you play as Luigi, and he's plays, I don't want to say it's plays like a totally different game because it's still Mario World, but a lot of stuff is different for him. Like, uh, he's got his, his wobbly idiot jump, as Dan Record used to put it. Those question blocks where you jump and you got to hit it ten times to get the ten coins. When he jumps and hit it once, all ten of them just kind of fly out in random directions. You run around, pick them up. And uh, I think the cape physics were different. Huh. And Yoshi can actually hold enemies in his mouth and spit them back out like he does with shells in the normal game. So it's a, it's a, a fun twist on a game that I've played to death in the past. That's cool. I, I remember you mentioned that. I'm interested to check it out at some point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that'd be a fun mini or just whatever to, someday. Yeah, just to do it again. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. watching more of this Mario thing. This has this has me interested. I might have to. <laughs> I mean, I I won't buy Super Mario Maker anytime. I don't care enough anytime soon. But yeah, and by the time I get it, this stuff won't be live anymore. <laughs> yeah, but right. This is cool that it exists. Yeah, it's at least worth watching a playthrough of, I guess. Yeah, I'm not a big Mario guy though. I I suck at platformers as I am am taught <laughs> many times whenever I play one on the show. Suck at them. Yeah. Well. Like, <laughs> Like I said, we're not we're not quite as young as we used to be. I was bad when I was young too. <laughs> this wasn't this didn't change. It didn't get worse. I actually got better. <laughs> oh Blake, what is something you've been playing? Oh man, I've been unusually like jumpy lately. Like I usually I'm pretty good about sticking to a couple games, knocking them out. I'm an efficient gamer. You know what I mean? Like, but I tried a few. There's like this long running kind of action RPG series you guys may have heard of. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's it's spelled Y apostrophe S. <laughs> y. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So have you guys played either, any of the East I games? I get the feeling Mike's about to talk about one of them here shortly. I played uh, one yeah. and two. We did an episode on one, a mini, and two will be, I'm not, right, January will come out. So I, talk, I just, I actually just beat it a couple days ago. It's, yeah. It's, which one are you playing? <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so <clears throat> I had played uh, eight last year. I think it's called, it's a nice. Lacrimosa Vena. Oh, amazing game. Loved it so much. So I picked up the ninth entry, Ooh. which is called Nostrum Knox. Yeah. Yeah. And I just I couldn't get into it the same. So I don't know. I put like ten hours into it, and it just I just wasn't hitting, you know. Okay. So I dumped it. I moved it on for for whatever I, reason. It shouldn't have the same magic. 
I started it the other day because the two Pokemon games that came out this year, uh, Legends Arceus and oh my god, Scarlet and Violet. Scarlet and Violet, that's the one. I just beat it the other day. Um, <laughs> they both let you ride Pokemon to kind of traverse the world, and I know Monster Knox is really big on that. Each character has got a different ability that lets you get around the world in a different way. So I was really excited to start it, and I played like half an hour, and then I decided I should probably be doing Game of the Year research instead. <laughs> but I'm excited to get back to it. It's, I mean, it was hitting like a, a lot of the same notes, I guess, but it just seemed, I don't know, maybe Lacrimosa of Dana was just like so good and, and my expectations were so high. It just, it just came off as, I don't know, weird and like just weirdly gated for like reasons that didn't make as much, as much sense. So in Lacrimosa of Dana, just to give a small breakdown, you're like stuck on an island and you kind of open up parts of the island as you play. And in this, it's a similar role. You're stuck in a town, but there's just like, you can't go to sections of other towns because magic curse. And I wish I had a more detailed explanation. <laughs> no, that's, like, that's magic, magic <laughs> curse. You can't, you can't go to this part of town. Like you get the, you get the curse. So, and I was like, eh, okay, you know, like the, the suspension of disbelief was tougher. So I, I put that down. That, that was on switch. And I picked up another series. I've wanted to try Divi- divinity, original sin. I picked up the oh. second. Oh, one. yeah. And so those. far, I'm I'm really digging it. Like I've kind of struggled with some of those isometric RPG. You know, like um, you guys probably both not like huge RPG fan. Like we could talk for days yeah. about RPG. <laughs> uh, but like I guess like isometric RPGs have always been kind of a sore spot for me. But this is more like the me. the PC one, which yes. would have been like mainly yeah, PC so back then. CRPGs, I think. But yeah, like a, like a Baldur's Gate type. All right, yeah. All right, let me give you an instance. I tried um, uh, Pillars of Eternity just because that's a genre, you know, I'd never got into. And it just, I just couldn't, it just wasn't working for me. Divinity so far is, I think it's, it's more turn-based. Um, so like the real kind of real time, I, I never got into those PC era RPGs. So it was just maybe a bit newer for me. Now I'm like an old, you know, old dog. There's no new tricks. <laughs> uh, but Pillars um, didn't do it for me, but but Divinity so far, I, I think I'm really going to like it. I'm only a few hours in, but it's it's been really fun, especially on Switch, because, um, you know, just take it where you go. Play. It's it's very open, and there's a lot to do, so it kind of lends itself just like a knockout kind of small objectives, you know, here and there. Portability um, is amazing, I found out way later. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's been a bit. So that's, I tend to play one game at a time on my Switch. So that's what I'm playing there now, really enjoying it. Otherwise, the game I'm playing literally as we speak right now, I've been playing <laughs> some Vampire Survivor. Oh, uh, this game. pretty dangerous, man. Oh. Uh, I know it comes with like a warning, but I think like an, an addiction warning needs to be added. To it. <laughs> it gets uh, to a point. It will. I mean, because so the to point, yeah, I got to that point. I unfortunately don't really. Pl- I played a little bit because the expansion dropped and I was like, well, maybe I should try to finish up some of the stuff. But it, it gets. I got to the point where now we're like every run I do is going to go 30 minutes, period. Like almost every one or they're going to be damn close. And the, and I don't need gold, really, because I already have all the unlocked that I care about. So it's just like it. I lost that, you know, that dopamine hit. Oh, I got some, I got more powerful now. Like there's no dopamine hit anymore. The point yeah, that I got to that mean- finally made me stop playing it was uh, <clears throat> when I 100 percented it. <laughs> 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 there's nothing else to do. <laughs> that point, yeah. <laughs> so we'll, I think <laughs> Tons of unlocks. Like, we'll see how long it holds my attention, but I'm like kind of. I just, so just for instance, I just got like six weapon evolutions for the first time to give you a sense of kind of how deep I am in the game. Okay. Um, so not super far, but like it's it's a fucking time sink. You know, like you, you sit down, wow, I'll have to do a couple runs and like six hours later, your beard's half grown and like, yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah, I've been in. trying to sort out my game of the year list and like. Obviously, like I just said, I hundred percented it, but like I don't know how high up it's going to be. Like, was I having fun doing that, or was I really just killing time with each Picking run while it. while I had a show or a YouTube video on in the background? I think that's I mean, a salt. Yeah, yeah, that's for what sure. it's perfect I, for. It's the like <clears throat> power wash simulator is the exact same way. It's like I kind of felt anxiety every time I started a new level, and I'm like, am I really enjoying this, or is it just something to do? I feel like it's the kind of game that we're going to see like iterated on dozens of times over the next Oh, it's already years. happening. <laughs> For sure. And like, so hopefully we'll see like this. You, I don't know, like the best way to describe it. Like it feels in a lot of ways almost, I don't know if unfinished is quite the right word, you know, unpolished. 
like so there, there's a fully optimized version of this genre that is like gonna blow the doors off so yeah. oh yeah game you can game. it's like the base version of what it's eventually going to be but like the yeah, dlc what, came out yeah. and the dlc adds one new area or maybe a couple areas but only one area that i played and it's, it's not a big open area. It actually has, like, you go different paths, you can, and items will be hidden in different areas. You have to walk through a certain path, and enemies are coming, you'll be more confined. Like, it's very different than what the regular levels are. Like, I went back and played the first level just because I was trying to get my character up to get an, one of the achievements with one of the new characters. And I'm like, I really like the new level more because it's more interesting. It's not just... Huh can't just go i mean there's tons of walls everywhere it it ends like you can't just run around and i think that's what we're going to see the evolution of this genre will be more areas that you're walking through and more things to find in an area that you're exploring that you're going to do to fill out your run instead of just like okay i'm just going to stand here and kill things forever until you actually have a purpose okay i gotta kill things get experience and then get to this get this item then you know you're going to see more of that i think as the genre grows yeah Yeah. but as like a proof of concept just like this is fun as fuck like they nailed it (laughs) I think like the, it needs it needs those carrots on a stick to keep pushing you forward. I think like yeah. to really really realize it. But it's been fun, you know. Again and and still like it's if you have you know you have thirty minutes to kill. Like there's there's few games that are just like as can you know you're gonna get the dopamine hit that you want like up to a certain level of just like oh fuck yes upgrade gold. <laughs> The fucking gems that are piling up here. So that's that, that, that element never gets old. It's a good game. I'm glad. You, are you playing it on mobile or on how are you playing it? Oh, no, I haven't played the mobile version yet. I, I hear that just came out. So I'm playing on Xbox right now. And I was I was pleased to learn like there was cross. I, so I picked it up on my PC at work and then come home, log into my Xbox and my first few runs are there. And I was like, all right, yeah, that's cool. So yeah. that's what we're doing now. Uh, otherwise, I've been playing some Overwatch 2. Like I'm still kind of into that. I. I don't have time to game as you guys, none of us do it like we did, you know, back in the day. So like, yeah. uh, competitive games can be tough to just keep up with the, the grind. And we're going to talk about another competitive game soon, <laughs> but watch too, I, I, I just really enjoy like those. I've always been a fan of MOBAs, you know, and like the, I think class based games uh, appeal to me, you know, Team Fortress, uh, Dota, League of Legends, Smite. And like Overwatch fills that niche and just like I just I just find it like really endlessly fun. Like the battle pass fucking sucks and I hate the progression and <laughs> battle can suck and solo queuing can suck and bad teammates can suck, but damn it, if that's just not when it clicks right, like there's just few other game experiences like a fully like on Overwatch match. Yeah. I played a bunch of the first one and like as much as I hate loot boxes, or whenever I got enough points to unlo- open one or whatever, it's like, oh man, here we go. And it's just like voice lines and shit. And it's like, oh yeah. But I'm still going to get excited the next time I can open one. We're all I never fucking played bad Overwatch, boxes. unfortunately. Oh, it's it's great. And yeah, the battle pass is awful. <laughs> like, you know, I, I yearn for the days of loot boxes, but like, <laughs> luckily, the, the base gameplay is fun enough to push yeah. me through. Addiction withdrawals is a disgusting thing. <laughs> well gambling i mean it, it has its kick it's why it works for people yep. i mean i don't play any game with gambling usually because i don't like anything with i don't like gambling in any shape or form whether it be game or real money i just don't like it yeah so loot boxes yeah. don't work for me but then again yeah. the game, so i don't <laughs> I, the the main i think the main like push pull there it, it, for overwatch this is probably not universal but like with the bat with the battle pass in overwatch you don't really get so a, a loot box, you had a chance from everything to like a spray that was essentially meaningless to literally like the most rare, you know, mythic skins you could get. Like the, the, the battle pass just doesn't give you that chance. You There's no chance for these epic rewards. You have to buy all of them now. And that's part of the process of moving from like a paid game to a free to play game. Yeah. You got to make some money uh, other ways. And... You got to make them up. But it's extra. I most I think every player that I know and play with just just agrees it's just not a satisfying system. But the game is fun as hell, so you know. It's also Activision. I think just yeah. Gets... So something tells me Activision Blizzard's going to do just fine regardless. Yeah, yeah. I suspect you're correct. <laughs> Plus, I mean, they just. I mean, I regret that I've never played Overwatch one or and I have and I won't play two. I just, but I, it's kind of something I regret a little bit because like. I remember one time I worked at a at a FedEx store and we had, and someone put a bunch of stickers in place. We could not figure out what character this was from the sticker. And we knew it was a video game or anime. And I'm like, it was bothering me. It was an Overwatch character. And it's just like, <laughs> I should have this information in my head somewhere, but I have no, it's, I've never touched it. So, yeah. 
they're, yeah, there there's some really good characters too, and it's it's part of what carries. I think you know a lot of the uh, a lot of people still. If they're not, you, you cannot necessarily be really good at, at games and enjoy Overwatch because of the gameplay, but like a, a lot of people have, at this point, I think have, have have really identified with a lot of the Overwatch characters, which is cool. Like yeah. for a shooter, you know, maybe maybe not something you see in a lot of FPSs. That's, yeah, I wish they just make a damn show already because those cinematic trailers are always <laughs> awesome. Like, <laughs> like, amazing, yeah. Some point, Get, hey, Activision. I'm sorry, I'm trying Activision sell sell toys of Overwatch stuff. I feel like. I mean, there's some Funko Pop, but there aren't that. I don't think there's that many of them. There's like little figurines and stuff that I see at Target every now and then. Okay, maybe I just don't look at toys enough. <laughs> I do want to get Funko Pops way too much, but well, that'd be something. Yeah, it's not as marketed as maybe it even could be, which is a weird thing to say. I, like, I swear, I don't work for the Activision marketing department. Just, just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I, Tell I, us uh, about the HR policies, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I would obviously, but you have you haven't signed the NDR yet, so we're gonna have to <laughs> ask all that conversation. And there's a few. I, I mean, there's a few Funko Pops I'm looking online right now. Somebody selling yeah. them, but I, I I know I've seen a couple. I just it's just it's just one of those huge blind spots for me for a game that's so big that I have no inform no like information about in my head, and it just kind of like surprised me surprises yeah. me that I don't have that. Can't follow everything. Yeah, I mean, and it's not. I try. So it's, you know, like, for instance, uh, like if you don't have an internet connection, then you can't play it at all. Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of people that it's just not going to appeal to. And and even, like, traditional shooter fans may not like it because of, it's so class-based, you know. Mm-hmm. In some weird ways, it's kind of niche, but, you know, obviously it has a huge fan base as well. Yeah, that's kind of my issue with it. I don't, I, I mean, I want a single-player game of Overwatch, and then I would play it, a single-player campaign of some sort. No, we swear it's coming. We've we've been yeah, swearing this yep. for years. Yeah, I, I remember. Time. I was excited. We're getting PVE. It's, it's gonna happen. Bro, we swear. Just listen to us. It's coming. We promise. <laughs> and I'll play a free version. I can just play through the campaign quickly. Like I'll play it then. I can't wait until it's. Oh man, not enough people bought the battle pass, so now we can't make the single player game. Damn. Because there's nothing fans love more than like being blamed for like content. Yeah, right content. for their own shortcomings. Great. Hey, it's not like Days Gone. <laughs> God, that shit. So stupid. I want to play it, though. I really want to play that game one day. It's okay. It looks cool. <laughs> Two separate <budget. laughs> Anyway, for people that don't know, the director's like, oh, people should have bought it at full price, and then blah, 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 blah. It's like, if you don't know how the game is, why the... Uh, uh, whatever. I mean, it it's... just things sell how they sell. Like, you can't These people be mad at people. Market, but yeah, the free market, like, cuts both. So, Speaking I decide... of a... Also Fine. insulting your fans is never good. Yeah, that's always they love that. People love love criticism on the internet, especially when it's not their fault. But speaking of buying cheaty games at full price, I played Alone in the Dark again. Because <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, we the three of us are all part of the I Watch the Entire Over Blood Super Replay Game Informer Facebook group, and every month, uh, one of the members, Sergio, posts a topic. Where people just kind of gather and talk about what they've been playing, what games they've beaten. But he always has like a monthly challenge. And this one was to play a game that would have fit in with the uh, the annual 1231 Super Replays they used to do. It was always shitty games like Overblood or Blue Stinger or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I could play Alone in the Dark again. I beat it once before. And man, the game still sucks. Like, it has so many cool <laughs> ideas. And it's just like a... <laughs> Like I told Mike the other day, it's like it has so many good ideas, but the execution may have well been its own. Because man, it did, it needed I, at least another like year in the oven or something. I want to play it again. I we've been talking about playing on the show for <laughs> since three years since now. I joined. Yeah, yeah, and I just never, I just, I can't put on the list because I don't actually want to do it. But <laughs> you don't. You really don't. I don't. I mean, I played it. I beat it once, but this was back. This was a long time ago. And I remember being a challenge for the worst reasons. Oh, yeah. No, I remember there being some really hard parts of driving that were just in, incomprehensible. Yep. The, the final gameplay sequence is driving from Central Park to the museum, and it's just hell. Like, it took me probably a good 30 tries, even though I've done it before. And Isn't it like an earthquake or something or fire? <sighs> it, yeah. Like, the road keeps shifting, and these roots keep shooting up out of the ground. And but I driving... was also playing the, the PS3 version the boast that it has improved driving controls, and I couldn't tell the fucking difference. <laughs> like, don't don't just lie in your box like that. <laughs> <laughs> the steering is one percent more responsive. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's false. Yeah, that's, that's why I didn't... I saw it, I was like, hmm, and I'm like, no. So what's yeah, instead of it, driving a clod bathtub on wheels, it's just a normal bathtub on wheels. That, that's why I don't want to play it. Like, I because I want to play it again, but I remember it being really, really hard. I mean, I might emulate it one day, just so I can save state and I won't care as much. I think there was a PS2 version. There is, really... but I'm waiting until I can emulate PS3. I mean, you can emulate PS3. It's just that yeah. I don't know if my laptop can... I don't think my laptop can... I don't have a good enough one to handle it well. I think there was a Wii version. I bet that's atrocious. Yeah, is this all I'm the sure. same? Though? All yes. versions are the same? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, in the Dark yeah. 2009 is what it's also known as. Or 2009, okay. It's a bad game. <laughs> I've never heard of this. That's a good thing. Yeah. It has some cool mechanics, but it's a, it's a really oh, yeah. bad game. The fire mechanics are amazing in it. The way the fire will catch the, any wooden surface nearby and things burn up and fall apart. But is everything that holds the game together is just shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another, another game that I want to mention that I, I did talk about on the show, but since I have Mike here, I, I, I played Metroid Dread recently. Uh-huh. I... I, I <laughs> I'll never buy it when it's on sale. <laughs> I, I want to play it, but like I just, I, I, yeah, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. I don't buy Nintendo. Real no, quick, I, I want to go back to Lone of the Dark says, pull up the Wikipedia oh, sure. page. IGN's reviews for the each version PC is a 3.5 out of 10, PS2 is a 3 out of 10, PS3 is a 6.8 out of 10, which is the highest. The Wii version is 3.1 out of 10, and 360 is 3.5 out of 10. So, okay. give you a little uh, idea of how that game is. I played the 360 version yeah, back then. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sorry to interrupt. Proceed. Yeah. No, Metroid Dread is it's good. It's just not as much exploration as like previous Metroid games have been or other Metroidvanias. It's much more strategy, maybe, is the word I want to use. Or, no, not strategy. More like Twitch gameplay. Like, you have to do a lot of, sh- you have to do a lot of shine sparking to get some of the stuff that is in this game. Oh, I just call it trial and error gameplay. There's that too. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of fucking like I I watched because there was I was trying to go for all the energy tanks just because I didn't want to die. And there was one you had to like shine spark up ramps and then hold it at the end of the ramp and then do it again. And I was just like, nah, I'm good. Mm-hmm. I just moved on and was content with what I had. But I, I I did I liked it for the most part. But I can see like it's much more. The exploration is not the same. Like, there's not as much. I mean, you can backtrack, but it's not. It's not like it is in other Metroidvania games, like Hollow Knight, for example, where you can really go back and find stuff that you just couldn't. You know, completely. It isn't like that at all. It's much more straightforward. Yeah, and like even and, when you revisit areas, they they're kind of different sometimes. Like with sometimes, the, yeah, the lava pipes points. and whatnot. And there's teleports you have to take to get to certain areas in an area. It's very progression based in in that sense, where it feels like you're just kind of following a the, the path, but it's yeah. also very. The boss fights are very, very challenging. Uh-huh. Boss like, fights were pretty good. But the, what, the, what the Emmy parts. The, game? the Emmy <laughs> parts. Oh, the you self? just keep throwing yourself at it, and if they get anywhere near you, it's a one hit kill unless you nail the point oh one percent chance of evading. But then trying to figure out where to like you used a guide and a map and all that, and I was trying to play mm-hmm. blind and just trying to figure out where to go next. Is is I didn't like, use a map as much. I mo. I usually use a guide to tell me what air, what zone to go to, and that was how I did it from there. There was at least, like, three times I had to look up how to oh, progress. A couple confusing ones. Yeah, one of them's, like, this hit, one innocuous hidden block that you have to bomb to be able to, to fall through the wall to get to the next part. Mm-hmm. There's a few that don't make... that. It, it's not like a normal Metroid game or a normal Metroidvania where, like, okay, I got a new ability, I'm going to go back and find new items and find this. It's, it's not like that. It's much yeah. more strict. I will say that the, the, the way Samus controls is a freaking joy. Like she's so agile on this one compared mm-hmm. to the others. No, Blake, it's a good game. It just I paid fifty bucks for it. and I was upset because I never pay fifty dollars for a game. Right. I never pay yeah, more than twenty, and I was very <laughs> upset. But Nintendo, I don't have a, I don't have it. I mean, I could have emulated it, but I didn't want to. I want to play it legit. And it feels like the Metroidvania like genre in general has taken like so many steps forward. Like you know, oh, God, with, yes. like. Hollow Knight, like just it's like the bar has been raised for those type of games. You can't just or again, which I haven't played it, not disparaging dread in general, but like it's <laughs> it, it's easy to like cheap out on that formula, but you can't really do that anymore with, with so many good games. It's not as good as Hollow Knight, for example. I think Hollow Knight's a better game. I have to go back to that at some point. You just you want to use a guide 
for stuff in, in Hollow Knight, so you know what you're doing, and you just you're gonna get your ass handed to you in the beginning, and then after a while, it it starts to make more sense. But it's a very very challenging game. I love it. I, so I'm the opposite. Like me and Mike are on opposite sides. So I I love the the blindness <laughs> of like my first Hollow Knight playthrough. It was fucking magical. Now I didn't get very far before I had to turn to a guide. So. <laughs> But <laughs> then I, I feel like I'm somewhere in between. Like I like the exploration, but at the same time, I don't want to have to do it. <laughs> so I, I don't know how else to explain it. You want it more no, where it's like you get a new ability and then you kind of like know, like, oh, I saw this earlier. And then yeah. it feels like the world meshes together better. Yeah, something like that, I guess. Like more Symphony Night. Oh, yeah. Where you get an ability and you kind of know, like, oh, I, I can go here now. And this opens up and then where Hollow Knight, there's some really hidden shit in Hollow Knight that you will not, and you have to do some real, same as Metroid Dread, some very precise, you know, button platforming to get through. Yeah, and like Blake said earlier, we don't we don't have time to play video games anymore. <laughs> we could, <laughs> never mind that I beat, you know, however many this year, but I think that's that's the other side of that, is I have to get to the next game. Like, I, I don't have time to keep wandering around trying to figure out where to go in games. Yeah, and I know the feeling. I think I get frustrated too easy these days. <laughs> Well, that's for other reasons that I won't say. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The time span, you know, like the attention span to just fucking dig around like a single level for like when you, you know, you can just turn to the Internet and like bypass this frustration. Yeah. Like, it's like I could on? keep wandering around in Metroid Dread or I could pop on Vampire Survivors and kill half an hour doing basically little to no gameplay at all. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm I TV at the same time. Five minutes and like I'm just. Racking up high scores here on Vampire Spider. It's just fucking amazing. <laughs> it's, it, it's amazing until you get near the end and you're trying to get those last few achievements and you're like, I can't go 31 minutes. Ah! Yeah. Like, yeah, that's 31 minute one you. sucks. That's where I'm at. I'm missing a bunch of those okay. and I'm just like, fuck this game. But one day. What, you have to kill, I mean, we won't, do you have to kill the fucking death? Is that even possible? No. Yeah, you can. Well, I mean, you can, yeah, but it's, it's more about freezing him with the clock lancet. And the two rings. Yeah. He's probably you pretty just... much have to freeze them at all times. It's the only, like, you have to get certain items, which means you have to walk very far in the map to get those two items. And, and that, to me, takes away some of the some of the fun. And you have ticking off a virtual checklist at that point. Pretty much, yeah. Can't really have the Tiramisu him. maxed out. Yeah. You need very certain things in order to beat him, and I don't like it that it's so... It's like that. That just bothers me. It's too... I'd rather have more, like, there are different options. There's really nothing you can do, but very... You need the clock lancet, or you need the, the two parts of the cloak and the laurel. You need those, either one of those things to beat, to have any chance to beat him and survive. That's fine. And I, I like don't bright like lights that. go Like, that's, that's, the, that's the stage of the game I'm in. Like, bright lights go for enemies die. I'm yeah, I mean, you're 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 getting achievements, you're getting stuff, you're getting gold to unlock more power ups. So that's that's where the game shines. It's as you get farther when the game is not as much gets harder. Where yeah, you don't get the dopamine hit. Yeah, yeah, that checks out. But no, it's still <laughs> really good. I mean, highly recommend. Yeah, for five bucks, or if you have Game Pass, it's on there now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and mobile versions. Like, yeah, fuck yeah, check it out. Get the dopamine hit while you can. It's... <laughs> I'm going for a long time. I mean, or you I got play the, some of some of the the clones. Like one I like playing was Gunlocked on Steam. It's basically the Vampire Survivors masked with like a shoot 'em up, a vertical shoot 'em up style. It's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, it'll take it'll probably take me a while to want to get back into more of them, but or more into it. I'm gonna try again because it's on my Steam Deck. It's a perfect Steam Deck game, by the way. Oh, okay. yes, for sure. That it's I'm in a Steam Deck group, and I swear it's the game they talk about the most. They make fun of people, but they talk about the most. I, mean, I think it's the most played game that game. I believe it. I'm in a few different yeah. discords, and like in each discord, someone's like, "Oh, I finally gave a uh, vampire survivor a shot. Now I'm addicted." It's <laughs> basically yeah. Mike's story. Yeah, it lasts for a while, and then it, then you just get done. But if you can't beat it, that that's my problem. But well, you can, I guess. Mike beat it, right? You got credits and everything. Uh, I got all the the in game achievements, so that's yeah. I guess I did get credits. Yeah, because you sent me pictures. Yeah, Yeah. You know, stuff exec at Konami just like dragged some employee in and was like, why the fuck didn't you guys do this? <laughs> <laughs> you told us not to make Castlevania games anymore. You told us not to make games anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the ultimate flex. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh, I'm trying to... Mike, you have any other games you want to mention? Before uh, we get I to just, the last one? Kind of a rapid fire. I've been doing a little 
game of the year research for stuff I haven't got to yet. Uh, Disney Dreamlight Valley I just started today. It's basically Disney Animal Crossing. Huh, it's pretty cool. Pretty, for me. Yeah, it's pretty cute. You're Violet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I beat Pokemon Scarlet. It's it's Pokemon. Dragon Quest Treasures I picked up. I haven't played a whole lot of it. It's it's very chatty up front. What is that? It, it's kind of hard to explain. I guess it, it kind of falls into the same trope of you use the monsters to navigate the world. Like you could have a Draki that'll let you glide for a short distance. Oh, but yeah. you're basically going out looking for treasure to add to your total. And as you gain more and more treasure, it opens up more areas. It's basically... I can already see how it's going to get repetitive because I feel like I'm already doing the same thing over and over again. I think that's going to be the whole game, but okay. it's pretty cute. And I always like the Dragon Quest monsters. So, I mean, that 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 will sell it for you if you're a fan of that series. Like, yeah, right. And uh, the not. last one, I was super excited to see that Blake was on this episode because I started playing Chained Echoes. Have you seen this, oh, Blake? Yes, I can't wait to get around to it. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, it's it a is- it's up your alley. Yes, it looks so, like very exciting. So I'm glad. Yeah. So the review I read said that it takes inspiration from 16 bit and like 32 bit era RPGs, but it's more in line of how you remember them than how they actually are to play these days. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah. I, I guess that just means it's a little more streamlined and not as grindy and repetitive battles and stuff. But I'm only a few hours into it, but it's a, I can see it's going to be a good one. Oh, a friend yeah. of the show, Nate, was talking about it, and he was he was texting me. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like Chrono Trigger. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> it, yeah, probably more so than I think I am Satsuno was, which was supposed to be the the Chrono Trigger spiritual successor. Pretty good so far. I'm I'm really oh, yeah. digging it. Is that a on my wish list? What's that? Is it on Dice Pass Chain Echoes? Yes, which yes. I didn't know, and I bought it, but at least I bought it for the Switch, so I don't feel too bad about it. And there's mechs in it too. Oh yeah, there's mechs. Oh okay, I'm that. yeah, I'm in trouble. <laughs> That might be on uh, next season that I write. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty good. I'm a sucker for Mech and Chrono Trigger. Hmm, got me. <laughs> oh, it's got a cool I, battle yes. mechanic where it shows you a bar and you go into like an overdrive mode and you don't want to go too far outside of it because then all oh, your characters get super weak. So it'll cycle the kinds of attacks that will lower the bar a little bit. So you're trying to keep in that sweet spot. So it's not just mash attack the whole time. Yeah, I think you'd like it, Mike. Yeah, no, it, it. I'm watching a review of it, and I, I I'm definitely gonna have to pick. It's on Steam, <laughs> it, but it's. I'm gonna wait till a sale, of course, because Just get get a month of Game Pass. You'll blow right through it. Uh, I don't uh, think it's terribly long. Like maybe thirty. That's long it. for for me, but yeah, with Steam Deck, I have proven I can beat right. game really fucking fast now because I can work it in. Yeah, you got time. Chrono Cross in like a couple weeks. Twenty three hours, according to. I beat Chrono Cross in a week. Thank you, sir. Yeah, well, a fucking week. <laughs> anyway. That was too much. Too much cross. <laughs> no week. Yeah. I devoted my my <laughs> week to cross. <laughs> oh, that's good game. That's yeah. That's the last of what I got. Okay, Blake, do you have anything else you want to mention before we snap at the end? <laughs> Let's see. I think that's mostly everything. I got the Xbox here. Let me make sure. Oh no. Okay. So I did start. I actually played my first match of Fortnite for the first time just because Someone posted a screenshot and they were like, this is what Fortnite looks now. And I was like, God damn, that's fucking gorgeous. So <laughs> I got back, in, got back into the island for a couple of matches and uh, a couple, uh, presumably like eight year old kids beat me down pretty quick. So yeah. I just I, uh, I have uninstalled Fortnite. Uh, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> I, also, <laughs> I, uh, I played high on life. Oh, boy. It. <laughs> you sound like you're choosing your words very carefully. I'm choosing words carefully here. It lives up to the reputation that most people have probably heard about it mm-hmm. so far. It's I don't think it's gonna be anything if you if you like Rick and Morty and like Justin Roiland humor, then you know, you'll get a few chuckles out of it. So that's where I'm at so far. But like it seems like it's mostly wrapped around like a relatively kind of uninspired, though like pretty shooter. You know, I got I don't see much going on outside of like the, the kind of novelty aspect of it. The uh, quote unquote humor in it. Right. That's like, you got to be Rick and Morty fan, then I'm guessing. Man, I just remember seeing the clips for it when they that game was in development. It's like, holy shit, how is like I don't get it. How do people like this? People love Rick and Morty. Yeah, like, I've watched I know. a couple episodes and I just I couldn't get into it really. But I like Rick and Morty. I, yeah, like so for me, I, I, I'm big like Community is my favorite TV show of all times. So, like Dan Harmon, I guess like. 
I, th- I think he tempers some of Royland's like worst impulses on Rick and Morty. So I think it's a little more palatable than some of his solo projects, which are just it, the guy's a bit of a one note. I, uh, I struggle to use the word comedian. <laughs> 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 I think you guys know what I mean. So I don't I don't expect I'll go all the way through it. I wanted to give it a shot. It is pretty like so you're kind of on these really like highly saturated colorful worlds. So there's some there's some like positives, but I I don't see myself sticking with it. And it's not it's certainly not going to like if, if someone's like, I don't really care for Rick and Morty, and you're like, Oh well fucking yeah, try it's this not gonna stuff. win you over. <laughs> you're you're gonna you're gonna be like, Well, yeah, I just fucking hate this guy more now. So <laughs> gotta be the right person for that stuff. I, I want to watch Rick and Morty at some point just because I feel like I should, but it just it was just not it was like this is just too stupid. It's one of those ones that I thought looked kind of interesting, and then I kind of heard how the fan base was. I was like, hey, you know what? I think I'm good. It, yeah, it's it's a weird show. Surprisingly, like gets into some really dark, maybe not so surprisingly, but like <laughs> real heady shit. You know, it does. So, what I've seen. But it's certainly not for everyone, and the game is yeah not disabusing that notion. So <laughs> I, that, I think that's uh, well. I've been playing uh, the, the the smash hit Sega Genesis uh, Crusader of Sinti. Oh, uh, how's that going? I meant to ask you about that. It's dude. I gotta say, it's fucking it like legit beautiful pixel art in this game. Like, I, I, I I'm like excited that. to play it finally. It, anything, yeah, I was not expecting that. It's a game that's been on my list to play for a very, very long time. I think Snapstruck probably mentioned it, and that's why I put it on the show. And I'm like, yeah, I need to play sounds this. about right. Yeah, still pretty early into it, but like I was, I, I it, especially growing up, you know, during that era, like and being such an RPG, well, it's not an RPG, but like fans of like, you know, I love Zelda, like one of my favorite games. I had a Sega Genesis, and I have never seen nor heard of this game before, so I was a little shocked by that. Like I'm kind of consider myself like a you know a student of like the history of gaming and this one i had never even seen so that was it's kind of cool to like you know it's it's legit like a old school game that i would enjoy that's like actually kind of new to me which is just like that's you know was i expected so that's cool <laughs> yeah yeah I'm no, i get that into it and i think that's it i think that's everything except for <laughs> so the last game we're going to talk about I'm going to go ahead and take a nap. <laughs> oh, you're not playing it, are you? No, I, well, I'll save my piece for when you get okay. into it. Talk about Marvel Snap, which is a cell phone game. It's the first time in a long time that I have gotten this invested into a cell phone game. Like, I can't put this damn game down. And I'm, and I put my, I spent money on it. I bought, see, I didn't, I didn't play during the first season because I was like, people were talking about, it. I'm like, I don't care. It's a freaking mobile game. I don't care about mobile games. Well, it turns out I care more than I thought I did. And <laughs> so I had no interest in it. I wasn't going to touch it. And then some, when the Wakanda Forever stuff started uh, that season, the Black Panther season, I I downloaded it because some people, people, multiple people had mentioned it said, hey, it's pretty fun. You should try it out. I'm like, OK, fine, I'll, I'll try it out. And now I put ten dollars in that season. I put ten. I immediately put ten dollars into the Silver Surfer season. Even I don't even use Silver Surfer at all at any of my decks because I just he doesn't work well for me yet. Yeah. I don't have the right card, but I just I, I really enjoy it. I'm at a thousand and thirteen collection at the moment. Oh, you're well above me. I'm at about nine hundred. OK, you're we're in the same spot. We're both in pool three where the game yeah. becomes a meta. For sure. Uh, so, God, there's uh, there's a lot we could dig into here, I think. Sure. Um, but all right, so you brought up the season pass. I just so I, uh, I'll start there real quick because it does it. It feels so maybe. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'm just like a fucking cheap curmudgeon. But even in, even even in the era of of like battle passes, it feels especially like kind of predatory and unrewarding. Is that? Do you not really feel that way? Where you you know you felt like good with the purchase of the of the pass and everything? I felt good with the first one because of the Black Panther card. I used it constantly. I still use it with this one. I mean, it doesn't. It's not predatory. Not it's ten bucks. It gives you more of a reason to keep playing and you get extra rewards, but you can do it at any point. Like for the Black Panther one, I played the game almost a whole month, didn't spend a dollar. And then I got to the end of it just about. And I'm like, why don't I? You know, I have been playing this so much. Why don't I just spend the 10 bucks? And then this season, I just spent the 10 bucks immediately. But you you do. I mean, you you'll make your money, but you'll, you'll essentially get the gold and stuff that you would have gotten by spending if you spend 10 bucks to buy currency like 
it it feels like you get enough stuff. You get a bunch of different variant cards, which is nice, and you have more cards to upgrade. You just get some cool little stuff. It's it doesn't feel predatory. I mean, this game, the the I mean, sure you could buy a lot of the gold. I mean, they're starting to add more monetization now. Like you have some really like you're a hundred one of the packs. A hundred dollars get apocalypse card, a variant of it, and some other stuff, which is highly not worth it in my opinion. But the season pass doesn't seem too bad. So seem worth yeah, it 10 bucks. maybe I I think it, I I would agree in the sense that I probably worded that wrong. The season pass itself isn't is not the worst part. It's not so bad. It gives you good stuff. I think it's the price, especially like the a la carte price or whatever of everything else that is so absurdly expensive. Like the variant cards you can buy with gold and the packs that they're adding now. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, no, like that that, 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 that is a little too much, but it's like you don't need to spend you don't really gain a whole lot by spending money. I mean, sure, you could upgrade your collection level and get more cards faster, but it doesn't really matter as much because like in pool three i mean it's all random what you get to if you're going to get really good cards or really shitty cards all that kind of a lot of it comes down to randomness to what you get in a pool like the way the game divided up there's three pools of cards that you'll get pool one pool two and they have and you get to pool three which is like the most most cards which is 75 and that's where the, a lot of the meta game comes in but you can still just like for me I pay the 10 bucks. I do the season pass. So I get some extra stuff, but even without it, like if you just do the daily, the daily mission that you get throughout the day, every day, you're still going to get a lot of stuff. I mean, you don't, and I don't feel like I need to spend the money in order to be, I'm not competitive, like to, to beat, to win. I just did it because I, I really wanted black man. <laughs> I didn't want to wait. Cause it you also fun. get, you get the cards and the, the cards you get from the season pass. You will then unlock the month after in pool three. Like I just got miles Morales now. Right. Yeah. Same. I recently got him. So it doesn't, in my opinion, it does. It doesn't feel predatory. Like, I mean, yes. I mean, all mobile games could are can have. I mean, there's you can spend a lot of money on this game for nothing. But I don't feel like you need to, or that it gives you any real advantage. I mean, a lot of it's just luck of what cards you get. And I and I've been getting. I mean, I have enough cards to make a good deck. I mean, it just depends on how you want to so play. What's your go-to deck? Let's, let's talk uh, a right fresh. now, it's reveal deck. It's all based on it's. All, Unfortunately, it's all based on three cards. If I don't get the three cards I need, I can't. I won't win. Wong, White Tiger, and Odin. If I get those three cards and I have them in turn four, five, six, you're done. I already won. As long um, as you don't. His, win, you know. his name is Wongers. I will hear nothing <laughs> of nothing. Oh, else. you watch, watch you. But other than, I mean, that that's my go-to right now. But just because, like, there's really good discard decks, but I don't. I haven't gotten Dracula yet. Mainly, I'm missing Dracula. And there's really good Patriot decks, but I don't have Patriot or Mystique yet. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff Michael, in this game. So, so but, well, you have no idea like the strategies or anything about the game, correct? Well, I, I look up videos and stuff, but I kind of just play. Like, I don't really care. Like, I ask, honestly don't give a shit if I win or lose that much. Like, yes, there's the ranking system where you're trying to get to 100. I don't care. I get the 40. If I'm lucky, I'll get the 40 or 50. Like, I don't. I'm not playing it for that. I'm just playing it because I like doing the daily missions, and then I... I get, you know, I mean, I have, I have purposely lost matches just to get a mission done. Cause I'm like, I need to do this mission. Oh, I do that all the time. Yeah. No, so I, I met Michael Hughes. Like, I don't know if he oh. knew anything about the game. I, total... I played it the first few, probably the first week after it launched. Okay. 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 So you have like a base. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I got into, I'll say my piece real quick. It's pretty short. Uh, sure. I got into it just because I like collecting the cards. Like it's not just the yeah. MCU heroes that you would expect like i have wolfsbane and just sentinel and shocker from spider-man like so that's all it is to me is just getting the cards and then i'm not competitive in the slightest bit so i don't like playing the actual game but they're also i don't think you need to be competitive with this game like i think they're changing it enough as time goes on where that won't matter any coming up because they're adding i know they're adding stuff to where the competitive part won't matter there's an other uh because you, they're adding a thing where you can just do missions without losing any rank and just play against people so you can just get your missions done, oh, okay. which is honestly what I'm excited for because that's one of my favorite things about the game. It's just doing random little missions and just getting cards. I think I played like six matches and won all of them, and I was pretty... I'm like, I'm just going to end out on top, no undefeated, and then I find out that like the first wave of players that you fight are all bots. So it oh. kind of lessened that blow for me. I didn't know that. It's okay. theorized. I don't know if it's been proven yet. Ah. Like, it kind of puts you against easy bots so you can get a feel for the game. I mean, it, and also the early I, game is much easier because you have less cards. Yeah. 
you're not in the the meta is there's there's a lot to this game as you get into it, like what kind of decks people use and how people win tons of matches. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll stick to Slay the Spire if I want to play a card game. <laughs> Well, for me, part of it, what I learned, too, is with the game is every match you do, you earn a little bit of points towards the season. I mean, it takes a lot if you're not doing missions to get. But every time you get a level in the season, which is a thousand points, which can take probably can take it can take a lot of matches. You get something. So there's always something that you're working towards, even if you're just screwing around because you just want to play. Yeah. As long as you bought the battle pass. No, no even if you didn't buy the battle pass. Well, once you get, you get one, no matter even yeah. without the battle pass, you still earn season points for every match that you do. You just don't notice it unless you look. But even when I didn't have the battle pass, I still earned it. I'm pretty sure. That is, yeah, no, you definitely do earn them, but it just the the rewards are fewer and far in between. I guess yes, I until mean. you get so, to fifty. Once yeah, you get to fifty, you... the rewards are nonstop, no matter what. I I feel like what I play the game for, I could get the exact same amount of enjoyment by just pulling up a card list online and looking at all of them. But yeah, if you're playing it like that, I mean. I never spend money on mobile games. Like I can't, I couldn't believe that I actually started spending money on this game and that I keep doing it. <laughs> but I just, I really enjoy the game. Like it, for some reason, it worked for me in a way that I didn't expect. I can't wait for the February. What are you playing? Where you have to talk about going cold turkey on Marvel snaps? Like I, I just, I had to delete it. I had to stop. <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen at some point. I mean, I'll, I'll feel. That's why I don't like spending money on mobile games because, like, it, you know, I'm not getting anything for it if I quit playing. <laughs> so that's uh, that's Otherwise why I'm not gonna get you for life. I mean, that's why I only will do the season pass because at least I'm like, I mean, okay, I spend ten bucks, but I play this game every day. And also, it's a perfect idle game to be playing while you're doing other things. So it's <laughs> yeah. perfect for that. Uh, <laughs> that's another reason why I, I, I play it so much because I can just it doesn't re- in, involve much thought, so I can it, and it helps me do other. I and it you know turn based, so I can put a play a card, do other things, type a little bit, talk, and then I can play an air card and like and, I, and it helps my brain focus on what I need to focus on. It works well for that. Makes sense. And and that, I think that's a big reason why I keep playing it because it's so simple for that aspect for me. No, just, I mean it's a good game. I mean it's a, I mean, if you like if you and I like card games. I've always been a big fan of card game, but I'll never touch like Magic the Gathering again or anything like that because I don't want to spend that kind of money on cards mm-hmm. ever again in my life. So. This takes away that and still gives me some enjoyment. And I mean, I really spent the season patch just to get the damn cards early. <laughs> That's the, amazing. The Pokemon TCG is on mobile now. You can play that. Pokemon never did it for me, though. Like, that's not a card game I really like. I like the card, but not the game itself. I can get you to play Slay of the Spire sometime. Oh, it's such a good game. It's so I'm good. I'm, I'm dog water at it, but man, is it fun. Yeah, I've never beat the final boss out of hundreds and hundreds of runs. Still working on that one. I, I lost, like, I think I've talked about this on the show before, but, like, in the spring, I lost probably the entire month of May to it. And then I picked it back up <laughs> the other day, and Game Pass had, like, I don't know why, but it basically ate my saves. So I had to start completely fresh, so I started oh. the warrior, and I got all the way to the heart on my first run, which I had never done before. Just a complete base warrior. So I was pretty proud of that, but I then I, I realized what all you have to do to actually beat the game is like nah i think i'm good yeah. i'm not going oh, through it really com- really challenging then or complicated you have to get so there's three floors before you get to the the heart so you got three floors three bosses you have to do that with the first three characters and then you have to do it again with the three characters but picking up pieces of some kind of artifacts that you use to fight the heart and then you have to actually fight the heart with all three characters yeah and it makes you run a bit harder that second time because you have to like for instance give up a treasure to get one right. of the pieces of the artifact stuff like that so it's it's a grind yeah okay that sounds a little too much then i mean it's it's it, super fun to play and i might get it eventually but i can't imagine trying to focus on getting that yeah okay i, I might not be interested in as much <laughs> it's a roguelike card building game yeah i i do have a thing for cards like that's why i, I enjoy marvel snap part plus i really like marvel in general and like Snap has so many different so many different cards in it. And also one thing nice another nice thing about Snap is it has so many stuff you wouldn't expect. Like you were saying, Blake, it has characters you don't expect. I think it was Blake or Blake. Yeah, I mean, it's not just the normal people. It's like you have a lot of really random shit that is in this game. Like Luna Snow. I saw that. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, it's a smartly designed game. And I think one of my favorite aspects of it is so it's very small decks. You have a twelve card deck, no no duplicates. So it's a little more simplistic than like magic. And each card in your deck feels like 
they're, they're so meaningful, right? Yes. You know, like with only 12 cards, like every single card, swapping out one card can change the flavor of the whole deck. And it gives every single card like such such meaning and power. Like we're in a magic deck or whatever, any other game, like so many cards can get lost in the shuffle. Hello. But <laughs> here, like it's uh, it's very, very tightly designed and just like they, they all have impact, which which I love about it. Yeah, and it's like you can really design and you can also it's a game where your first couple turns can be nothing and it doesn't matter. Like I can if I have the right cards in my deck, I can sit there till turn four and do nothing and then beat you still. Yeah. It, it's nice. I, I really like I mean my deck also isn't that great because I'm missing a few cards that I, I need for my deck that I just have not gotten yet out of pool three. But it doesn't cool. feel like I mean, almost every day by doing the, just by doing the, by by doing the dailies, I usually or every other day I usually will get a new card, and that's and I'm farther in the game, like where the card drops are getting less and less. Because I think right now I think it's about to be I'm about to get to the point where it's 25 percent chance when you get new cards. I think is where I'm starting to get to. So it's a, it's a bit daunting once you get to that level. Yeah, just, but you you get other stuff like you get. I mean, they had the collector's tokens this month where you can buy cards. I unfortunately spent, because they gave me a ton because I was higher level, and I unfortunately spent a bunch on one card to buy She-Hulk when I probably should have waited. <laughs> uh, my friend did the same thing. Now, he, he has no complaints. He has an amazing Sunspot She-Hulk deck that he just um, has been crushing people with. Oh, you should uh, have Sunspot, him send me what he cool. uses. Yeah. I'm curious because I might copy that because I, I, I bought her. I mean, well, I don't use her. I use Sunspot all the time. So, yeah, you can get some great combos with um, so a, a destroy deck with like a death sunspot she hulk kind of. So essentially sunspot gains power based on your leftover energy, which is like mana or yeah. uh, like magic. And she hulk gets cheaper for each unused magic. And there's also cards, Mike, you may not have. I believe it's Electro who gives you an extra max energy. I so do you have him. I just got him actually like yesterday extremely important part of that deck pair pair okay. that with with something like uh something uh like they can remove that ability the last card i got which made me upset was i got agatha harkness finally <laughs> fuck that card she killed lucky she's useless fucking card cards for you uh, while she's in hand yeah and she's uh, a six four i mean she's a nice power 614 but she and I've seen her play. It's like I've gotten her before randomly from Agent 13, which I use all the time. And I'm like, this is like, <laughs> what are you doing, AI? Like, you're playing the wrong cards. Yeah. She's like, you're not even trying. She's not out there to help you. <laughs> my favorite deck, I've got one. It's built around just the entire concept is I call it my fuck you deck because it's just like every single card just like fucks with what the opponent wants to do. And it's been great. Like, I get so many people to retreat because I'll drop an Iceman followed by a Scorpion followed by, like, an Electra and just, like, constant just messing with their shit. So that's that one's really been fun. I've enjoyed okay. that. I I have a Destroyed deck that I copied off some guy on YouTube that he was using. And it works okay, but I just, I, I'm missing certain cards I think I really need. So. Yeah, that happens a lot. Like, you'll play, you have a deck and there's just one or two cards and you need to really make it sing. And that's where that kind of grind, because it's just, rant, you know, there's, as you were saying, a very, very limited ways to get the specific cards you need. But actually, in a weird way, I kind of like that. Like, I like the idea of being forced to work around limitations, which is why Slay the Spire is also a fun game, because, like, you can't just optimize your deck every single, you know, at, at will, essentially. Like, you're you're being forced to, like, work around the obstacles, and that, that to me, that's a much funner mental challenge than just putting together a meta deck and like autopiling it to victory every time. Yeah. So. Even vampire survivors is like that. Like you could go aiming for an evolved weapon, but it might not drop the thing you need to evolve it. Right. Yeah. That's exactly like I, I, that is much more interesting to me than just, you know, being able to like a magic, the gathering, for instance, where it's just built around an infinite combo that you know, you can access at will essentially. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been I've been having a, I've been having a blast with Marvel Snap, like just playing it. I mean, I I usually try to do a mission, but I don't know, just really fun. Like I can't believe how much I'm enjoying this game. Like I just did not think that would happen, and here I am playing this game every day, multiple times a day. Yeah. Does it feel to you like like I, I like the idea that even if I'm up against a better deck, like there's there's plenty of times where it feels like you can legitimately or ha- get a win by just outplaying. Like is. Because it's yes. as much about anticipating your opponent's play as it is your own play. So, like, kind of 
playing against their expectation and like getting a surprise win is just like man it feels so good even even when you have an inferior deck like it it feels like a lot of the times because it's smartly designed in the sense that like those those locations right for those of you who don't know it's essentially built around three locations and whoever has the most power at at least two of them gets the victory so it's it's a smart change to the win condition you know yeah provides it helps you can ability. You can just ignore certain lanes or if you see that the you know that the the opponent has taken over a lane completely like okay move on don't put any more cards there and we'll go out we'll worry about other lanes exactly yeah so like just kind of knowing like all right especially once you play for a bit like all right this guy's about to drop heimdall here move his cards here <laughs> like that and then playing something against expectation and getting the win man i can't it. tell you how many times people drop Heimdall and I didn't do anything special and I, I just win because Heimdall, they didn't plan Heimdall right and just fucks them over. Yeah, they think Heimdall's like instant win. If you have a move deck, you just put Heimdall down, you're going to win. Like it's You how can, it's- but you have to have set up to make it work. Like I had people that push all their cars to the left lane with they were already winning. Like, oh, I, I, I wasn't doing anything with the left lane. Like you can have it. Like I gave it up and you're like, oh, okay, thanks. You gave me the right lane that I was losing and now I had the center lane too, thanks to you. All right, cool. I won. Yeah. I've got a really good move deck that's, I feel like, one of my better decks, but you, it's you ha- yeah, it takes a lot of planning, for sure. Like, some decks you can just kind of plop stuff down and hope that your power advantage will win, and some decks yeah. you can. And that, again, it's one of, the, one of the fun aspects of that game. There's so many different ways to hit the win conditions it's asking for. And, of course, the locations give you you know themselves have so much variety and unpredictability so that i think that's like a big positive like there's all there's so many quote unquote like landmines in the game that just like prevent people from just steamrolling with the same strategies over and over you just can't do it you you have to think on the fly and that is like certainly that's and you what you usually I get think. the cards you need like even in a even you know with a 12 card and you end up getting majority of them unless they start fucking you over you get a bad one of the bad zones that have you draw other people's cards. You know, it's usually, it's not bad. Like, I, I don't even care if I win or lose, to be honest. Like, I mean, sometimes I'm like, oh, cool, I'm going to actually rank up this time and get the 50 or, you know, get the next one. Like, I don't, I don't care. Like, I just play the game just to play the game and get point. Like, I could give a shit. Like, I would like to get infinite to get the extra card packs and get the extra gold and, you know, credits that you can get by getting up there. But I honestly don't, like, it doesn't matter to me. It isn't why I play it. And I like I like deck building, and this game like really does lend itself to deck builders because it's not so large that it's just you know you could sit down or you know, whatever and take a few minutes and like put together two or three decks you know like because they're they're, they're small and like you're there's re- at this point at least there's relatively few archetypes you know what I mean like there's so, a few main ones like there's discard destroy reveal ongoing type decks exact, right yeah but it's but not you like, can beat other ones like i mean you can fuck over my deck if they throw if they throw a certain car, like cosmo down for example or enchanters down on, and i have long like you know they, they can fuck up my strategy and but my deck's not very good my deck is really not in my opinion not good because it's based on long and white tiger and that's it and then odin so you not a good deck. well it can work obviously and uh you you can get wins with it for sure but it's the kind of deck i love to play because i run enchantress and cosmo which are again two cards uh-huh. built to fuck over my opponent <laughs> I used Cosmo a lot with Destroyer, just so Destroyer wouldn't do any, so Destroyer wouldn't kill everybody. <laughs> oh, that's, and that's, I, I love those interplays, man. And again, it's interesting too because unlike so many other card games, in this one, you're not. It's not based into different resources like Magic, Hearthstone, Legends of Runeterra. Like you can't, you know, there's different colors of mana or whatever. But in this game, you can any single card you can pair with any single other. Uh, yeah, it's all. It's all very simple too. It's it's not a complicated game in the in the onset, and it doesn't matter if you win or lose. Really, it's just you just you can just enjoy playing it. That's yeah, nice. simplified it in the best ways while keeping like the strategies and like the stuff that should be complex there. Which is that's not an easy you know rope to walk, and like they they nailed that aspect of it without yeah. a doubt. And it feels good collecting. Yeah, I mean, my whole goal right now is just keep collecting cards, just get through. And then eventually, when I have more cards, I can make better decks. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, I don't even care if I win. Like I said, I don't care. I just want to play and get... I'm just trying to get all the cards right now. And then eventually, I, then when I have all the cards, then I'll care more about actually winning. Yeah, and like, t- the retreat option, uh, which is kind of unique to this game, is another element that, like, adds that layer, you know, kind of interact. I, I, it's, it's good, like, when you're getting totally dominated to have the option to kind of back out of the match and, yeah. you know, tactically 
retreat as a you know it, it, it cuts back on people who are losing and then just like disconnecting or quitting <laughs> uh, you know it's like that's a really it's a really smart mechanic and of course the the whole snap as you know just they nailed nailed the flavor of like marvel characters so yeah. many cards are so especially the way they interact like i don't know man like that aspect of it like i don't know if i've this sounds like maybe like hyper hyperbole, but I really don't think it is. <laughs> it may be the best use of the Marvel like license in a game, just with the flavor and everything that okay. they they just nailed it, man, in like really subtle and cool ways. And, uh, and me- you like it that you really don't need to spend money. Like you'll get all the cards anyway, even if you don't spend a dime. You just have to play a lot, but you don't like because you, you can't buy a card exactly. You can't even you can't even thankfully buy collector tokens either. So you can't yeah. have people who just, you know, put a thousand dollars in and have everything. Agreed. And I, uh, that's, I think that's a really smart and good play on their part. I'm, Agreed. I'm with you on that one. All right. I think we should move on to something. <laughs> Thank um, you for joining us for our Marvel snap mini episode. Uh, yeah, I thought about it. I mean, this is okay. This is <laughs> the last time I was into a, into a mobile game was Mario Kart dash. I played a ton of that and I almost, I almost put money in that game, but I never, I didn't actually spend money, but this is the first the time. Diablo Immortal. I oh, yeah, I did play that. Okay, that only lasted for a month though. But I didn't spend any money on that. My problem with that is that it's just, I just I got bored. <laughs> it wasn't as pick up and play. It's a good game, but it's not. It's not. You can't just pick up and play it as easily. You have to like actually play for a little bit in order to actually do things. And and that didn't. And it also drained my battery really bad. <laughs> yeah, so, it'll do that. I mean, if I could play, if I could play Diablo Immortal on my PC without issues, and I could play it out of, through Steam and not have to go through Blizzard, I would probably play it. Yeah, but um, I don't want to go through Blizzard. Before the last thing I will say about Step, it heats my phone up like I mean, like the damn Human Torch. Is is it only me? <laughs> Does this happen to you, Mike? Like I swear to God, my phone's so hot. While I'm pl- like if, after a few matches of Snap in a row, my phone physically, literally begins to heat up. Uh not terrible. I've had other games that heat up my phone more, but not a little. No, I haven't had too bad with Snap. Okay. I thought, yeah, no, I know what you mean. It, it, your, my phone can get hot, but uh, it hasn't been too bad with Snap. But it, it gets, it gets warm. Okay, yeah, warmer yeah. than I like. Warmer than I like. That's a good way to put it. I, I like my phone, my phone to be lukewarm. <laughs> I don't. I it worries me to start getting really hot. Like oh, maybe I shouldn't be playing this. Like, but no, nothing crazy has happened with with it with Snap. Okay, that's good. All right, and then we should talk about some shows that we've been watching or movies that we want to mention. I have a couple. I have one random thing I want to mention first for a documentary series I found on Netflix just by browsing the internet <laughs> that made me laugh my ass off. Uh, Pepsi, you owe me a jet, which is a four-part documentary series about a giveaway a Pepsi had where they had a stupid commercial in the '90s. I don't even remember where it said it had a jet and it said Harrier Jet seven million Pepsi points, and it was a joke, but it wasn't. They meant it as a joke, but it was all you know, trying to trick people into buying more Pepsi. And then a guy actually figured it out and said, "Okay, here you go," and they wouldn't give him his jet bullshit false advertising i mean he, they they almost settled they would they were about to settle for a million dollars but he's like no i don't want a million i want the jet and oh, well, jet. he got nothing instead he got nothing nothing because he went to court but it didn't go to a jury spoiler alert for the documentary but yeah he got nothing because he if he would have just taken the million dollars that he would have got the million but because he he really want i mean he wasn't, I mean, from everything I'd watched, like, the guy seemed really genuine. He really just wanted this jet. He just really wanted the jet, and they and they would not, they weren't doing it. But yeah, they offered him a million dollars, and in the end, he went to court, and the judge was like, well, this wasn't a real offer. There was no disclaimer at the bottom of the ad, mm. even though when they ran the ad in Canada, it had disclaimer, but not in America. It was, I mean, it really was false advertisement, but the That's judge awesome. was a corporate judge type, is the way they put it, so she went with the corporation. Give the man his jet. <laughs> Let's just give the man. I mean, like, well, so he didn't actually save up seven million points from Pepsi. He found a way. There was a loophole where he, they had a calorie. You can buy. You can buy points for ten cents a point. So for seven hundred thousand, you could buy a jet. You could <laughs> wow. get enough points to buy the jet, and they didn't appreciate that that he did that either. So not only did he not get his million dollars or the jet, he lost out the money he spent buying Pepsi points. No, he didn't. No, he got the money right back because he sent him the check. Oh, okay. And then they, they didn't cast the check. Even though the, one of the guys even said, we thought about casting the, che- cash, ca- <laughs> cashing the check and then sending him a, a model Harrier. He tried to <laughs> put a lump sum of like, here, this money is worth and convert it to Pepsi points and then buy a jet. I see. I thought this was like a long term, like over years, this poor guy. No, so he did this all within months. 
Okay. It went for years. The, the legal battle went for years in the back and forth with them, but they never... I mean, it's in legal books now. Like, they were talking about it in the end. Like, it's actually something they teach in, in, in law school. They talk about this case. <laughs> it was, I never even heard of it. Like, I... It was just... It was, like, really interesting to watch this. I'm like, oh, never even... I was around in the 90s, but I don't remember any of this. So, it was cool. We hear about the woman burning herself on a McDonald's pickle, but we don't hear about a guy trying to get a fighter jet from Pepsi. Mm-hmm. No, I mean the pickle, the the coffee one is. I mean the coffee was too hot and everything, and yeah. they they burned a, it burned a hell out of her. Like, and she and they and she just wanted them to pay for the medical expenses, and they wouldn't even do that. And that's why that's why that's why I went to court because they McDonald's was being an asshole, and then they got taken for more money when all she just wanted was just pay for what you know, pay for the damage, pay for my medical bills. I'm like, nope, we don't want to pay nothing. Your fault. And this guy just wanted a jet. Like that's. Mm-hmm. Totally it was it was really interesting. Like the, whole, the documentary really just about the guy and this investor, and then also had Michael Adveni, Advanani or whatever tell that lawyer of, of Stormy Daniels from a few years ago. Yeah, he went to jail, I believe. <laughs> yeah, house arrest. But <laughs> yes, he was in. He his one of the first things he he worked with those guys, and then for a little bit. So he was in the documentary too. But it was it was in, it was really interesting. It's called yeah, Pepsi. Where's my jet? Even though I kind of spoiled it, it's still very very interesting to watch, and it's on Netflix. What would you just, do with a jet? Like you. Can't, <laughs> you basically have to like rent a ha- rent or buy a hangar. Yeah, somewhere. he had like whole business plan how he was going to use it for air shows and things, and like it's a fucking Harrier jet. Like you can't exactly. I'm sure the Frito Lay Corporation has access to a jet somehow. It was, it was really interesting, and it's also you know I think again it affected like you'll, you'll never see their ad with without having some disclaimer yeah. in it. You know, they because they were again, they their point was to trick people like, oh, hey, you can get this, even though you never actually well, it was, would. I think it's more of a ha ha, like, you can get a jet, why not? That's what they said, but you at the same time, like, there's enough, there's enough information to show that it, it was a ploy. For 80 million Pepsi points, we'll come to your house to kill your mother in law. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was really interesting. Like, I was like, it's like, okay, I, I really liked it. Yeah, that's pretty funny. So, and then, <laughs> Haven't been watching too much else. Watch a little bit of Wednesday here and there on Netflix. We, we keep talking about starting that. I haven't done it yet. It's, I hear it's good. I, I I watched from episode three to like episode six off and on because Tiff was watching, but she kept falling asleep during it, so she hasn't finished it yet. That's always good when you start a series at episode three. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I was she just had it on. I'm like, sure, you can watch. I, I don't care. I'll just edit. I'll just edit anyway. Um, but at some point, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually start it from the first episode. I've seen the I've seen the third episode now twice. So one day I'll <laughs> actually watch the show. Yeah, okay, but it seems fine. That's what we should do. We should, instead of doing the pilot test, we'll do a s- series of episodes where we watch the third episode out of a show. And That's just terrible. write the whole series based on that one episode. Yeah, exactly. That sounds terrible. Like every episode, we just complain that we don't know what's going on because we didn't see the first two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it worked in some shows, but depends on the era. Oh, wait, anything, you, anything you've been watching you want to mention? Oh, uh, wife and I both watched Lightyear and the Bad Guys, or both children's movies i guess technically oh. that came out this year and they're both fantastic and have way more for adults than i would have expected they're pretty good okay. i want to watch light year yeah it's, it was like we went into both of those with no expectations and left both of them uh pretty good okay uh blake anything you want to mention yeah so i'm not honestly i i watch less tv and movies than probably most people i, I watch a lot of sports but what i am watching this is Extremely timely. The <laughs> Wire. Finally watching The Wire. <laughs> <laughs> Heard good things about it. Never watched it. It turns out a little behind the times on that. It feels like I I don't, I don't know when it came out, but it must be like early two thousands. It's a while. I can tell you that. So that that's about where I am in like the cultural <laughs> like the, the, the TV level. Like, hey, but at least you're getting to it. I mean, it does. I mean, in my opinion, it doesn't matter when you watch something long. I mean, if you if you get to it, you get like you get to it. And like I said, I, I really don't watch much TV, so like they're they're few and far between. I just I'll just loop Community over and over in the background, <laughs> and then like that's about it. Oh, I can understand. I'm still watch. I'm almost done with my complete second watch through a Big Bang Theory, so I get it. We're and about to the end of season eight. Finally, I am done. Oh, that's when the sh- hey, you can tell the show was like they're ready to end any season now. They're like, we are we over yet? Are we done? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can tell about seven I, seven onward. Every season, you never know. Yep. I rewatched The Thing recently just because it's my favorite movie and everyone should rewatch that. Yeah, that's a good one. Get an episode about it. Go check yeah. it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me on the, the watching landscape. Okay. I have a couple things still. I've been rewatching Batman the Animated Series after he pa- after he passed away. Kevin Conroy's. I've been watching that. I'm I, in the season two now. That is a really good show and very, very dark for a kid's show. Really a fucking dark. 
<sighs> I haven't gotten. To, I know the third season when the anime the animation changes, and I'm <laughs> we'll see. I feel about how how long I stick with that one, but oh, the new adventures. <laughs> yes, because season two is when they rebrand it as the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Yeah, and then season three is where the, it's a new where it got canceled and and then put on a different on a different network, and then they changed the animation. Oh yeah, I went from like Fox Kids to Kids WB. Mm-hmm. And I haven't. We'll we'll see what, how I feel when I get there. But I'm just after he died, I just started watching the whole show, and and I've been working through it little by little. But I'm, it's my thing to watch. Have you now. seen all of Batman Beyond? No, never. Oh, that'd be a good one to do next. The first two seasons are really good, and then three uh, quality dips pretty hard. I I've seen the movie. That's about it. Oh well, that's good too. <laughs> that's probably that's the all. highlight. So you're probably you're probably good, honestly. One I've tried to watch Batman Beyond. One day we'll see. I don't know. And then I also been watching. I watched uh, Andor finished. I watched all of that. That's a good show. A lot of people had complaints about it because it's very different Star Warsy thing. There's no Jedi. There's no Force. It's not. It's also very very dark. It's a lot about fascism, which is what the Empire is. But it's a good show. Yeah, I want to watch that. It's worth watching. It's very different than what you would expect. But I really, I, I enjoyed it for the most part. Just don't watch it all in one day like I did before I reviewed it. Or not, I, well, I watched not all of it, but the majority of it in one day before the recording just to rewatch it. And that's not, I don't recommend it. So. Is it the best Star Wars show? No. Would you say? No. Not to well, me. Mandalorian, I would say probably one of those seasons is the best just because of just, maybe Mandalorian season two is fucking amazing. But it, it's a very good show that. It it, break, it it goes on the things in Star Wars that we haven't gotten before, which is what makes it so good, I think, is that it's much more in the Empire and showing you and also really kind of shows you what really started the rebellion, because there's there's things that they do in this in this show that affect the whole world eventually and leads to what makes the rebellion happen because they get the Empire to be stupid and to lock down on people because that always works in every fascist government. Ask, uh, ask every fascist dictator in history. Ask them. Like, you know, Gaddafi, how that worked out for him. There's some, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah, it, spoiler alert, it doesn't work out very well. Ask, uh, ask Saddam how that worked out, you know, when they cut off his head. So when you crack down your people, eventually they will murder you. <laughs> so <laughs> eventually they will get to it. But yeah, it's a good show. Nice. Yeah, and oh, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this last uh, episode. I don't remember when I watched it, but I watched Thor Love and Thunder at some point. <laughs> God, that movie was fucking awful. Like, I was so upset uh. because I really like Thor Ragnarok. You can listen to the episode in here. And I fucking hated Love and Thunder. Hated that movie. I'm like, this is like, this is like Guardians 2 garbage for me. Like, it was bad. The, I felt like an outlier because of how much I hated Ragnarok and everyone's just like, oh man, it's so good. And then to hear people so down on Love and Thunder, just, it, it makes me feel well, kind Ragnarok of Ragnarok had the right mix of, of humor for a lot of people. Or well, Love and Thunder. If- if you go back and listen to that episode, Bill and I will, will highly disagree oh, yeah. with that. But Love and Thunder, it's like he doubled down, but he also just it's a stupid like Jane Foster's in it, you know, which is great. Like they got her back. But spoiler alert, she died. And mm. I know you don't care. So it doesn't matter. No, I don't. I'm not. <laughs> and it's, it's out there enough now. Like, you know, I thought, OK, they're going to get rid of Chris Hemworth and he's going to die. And they're going to, you know, Jane Foster will be Thor for a little bit. Nope. She's in one movie. I think it's just she's like, I'll come back for one and I'm done. And yeah. it's just there's a lot of really stupid shit in it that just doesn't work. Like you have these dumb goats to go ah, just all mm-hmm. random ah, just throughout the movie. The just, ah, and, and as annoying as it sounds right here, but it keeps happening in the movie. It was so t- tonally inconsistent that like mm-hmm. it, when it wanted to be serious, it felt like that it wasn't earned. No, so. it's just, you're just it, waiting for the punchline. Right, yeah. yeah, it just didn't work. It and it made me sad because I was I was actually excited to see that movie and then I just. It just turned out so bad. So, yeah, I'll, I'll I won't watch it again until I cover it someday. So and it won't be a fun covering. <laughs> yeah, I think that's everything that I want to mention. I've been watching that because I didn't really keep track this month. And I was like, oh, should I better write down some stuff? So I don't really play. <laughs> I've only got lot, one but... more thing on my list. Oh, sure. Uh, I've been started a new po- listen to a new podcast called The Leadest, and they their big claim to fame is they do games about games. It's basically video game trivia, but they kind of do it in really fun ways. So like every episode, they'll do three or four different games that they've made up themselves. Well, for the most part, they take inspiration. Like <laughs> there's one episode where they did a uh, back of the box trivia, basically Ben Hansen, Ben Hansen's claim to fame, the game informer show, but they'll do like uh, one they call smash up or they'll take two video games and mix the story together. And then you have to name the two games they put together. Like, uh, that's fun. One was uh, drive your your motorcycle through the zombie apocalypse to get home to to find your sister. But don't worry, she left plenty of clues of where she went. 
And it's oh, gone uh, home. Days gone. Days gone home. Oh, <laughs> it's basically a Wheel of Fortune's before and after puzzles. And I was like, oh my god, man, I found a treasure trove because I love video game trivia. So it, if you like game that's trivia, it's definitely one to check out. Okay, that's cool. So I don't, I don't know if it counts, I guess, but I have been playing Dungeons and Dragons for like the first time in my life. Hell yes! Oh, nice. God, I yeah. miss it so much. It's fun. I'm, yeah, it's great. I never never played younger. Always wanted to, never got to. And I'm DMing. And we're about like, twenty sessions in, and I am f- I am fucking having the time of my life. It's, it's fun, so much fun. You've got the right people, right? We we have a great group, like four of my friends, and then I DM for them, and it's oh man, that shit has been really great. I, I haven't played it since I was a kid. I used to play Rifts, which was like like D and D, but a futuristic version, a futuristic one. I don't know if it still exists or not, but I I love that stuff. I just. I haven't played. The last time I, the, I had somebody offer me once to play an Amish guy who had his house painted like the Vikings colors, and he asked me to play <laughs> once, and then he never came back to ask me again. Oh, uh, I never played with him. Uh, <laughs> He's like, "Hey, played. you want to join our DD?" I'm like, "Sure." He's like, "Okay, let me go check with the group." And I never came back. Uh, so, wait. <laughs> the council decided it'll be your fate, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was busy as hell back then too, but I was like, er, you know. We're moving on too fast here. Did you say you had an Amish guy decked out in the like Viking? <laughs> yes, I did. He was he was some kind. It wasn't like straight up Amish, like black and white. It was some kind of Amish guy. I don't think he has much electronic. He lived right next door to me, and his house was not anymore, but it was painted in Viking colors, so purple and gold. Okay, we just brushed right past that, but that's like a. <laughs> <laughs> they, they repainted the house. I, I laughed, and then in my old in Milwaukee where I used to live, there was a person that painted their house green and gold for the Packers. They also repainted their house. That's crazy. I don't understand how twice in my life I have lived on the same block as someone who painted their house as colors of a, of a football team, but it's happened twice. Like you said, you watch a lot of sports. Are you that dedicated of a fan to paint your house and your your team's colors? I cannot fathom no. And like, and I live in, in the South, where like college football is essentially like the third major religion around here. Like, <laughs> oh, and I don't know anyone who is with that far. So that that really is pretty impressive. What state are you in, Blake? Arkansas. Okay. Because I would, on um, the Andor episode, you can hear about it. Uh, Carrie talked a whole bunch about the AN- Texas AMM bonfire thing. Texas they don't A&M's, do anymore. But they have he, been very bizarre. Even in, even in a sport filled with bizarre like traditions, Texas AM is fucking. Oh, uh, if you want to hear a, a 10 minute rant about it where we go off topic, like, yeah, it's in that episode that will be out in January. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he, was, he wasn't there for it, but he was there a couple years later when they were trying to bring back the bonfire after 13 people died. Right. People died. Yeah. 13 people died in it, and they're like, we got to bring it back. It's like, come on, guys. Like, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> people died. We're not going to redo this again. It's a horror movie star when you try to bring back something where people died. Yeah, it was. He was talking about it. He's like, yeah, he was like, it was a couple years removed since it happened. People were like, yeah, we need to do it again. They just built a giant bonfire and then put like a port, a port of John, painted the colors of a different college team at the top of it with this giant, like, I don't remember how many feet tall he said this bonfire was they would make out of stuff. So, and these weren't contracts. He was just a college kid that would just built this thing. So. That's objectively fucking. That, if, like, do you want ghosts? Like, that's how you get ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Florida story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Florida yeah, man. I'm just, like, imagine explaining that to, like, an alien who has no concept of sports. It's like, yeah, yeah, they throw the, the ball around. And, like, forehead, you have to build a fire with the box that people poop in to set on fire. And they're like, well, yeah, like, I'll, but it, I think it was like 50 feet or 40 feet tall. It was it was pretty big. They would build this thing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Every I year. To, I have to ask now, how did the people actually die from this? I don't know when it died. Oh, yeah. That makes got, sense. That was a big Probably deal. could have pieced that together myself. It, it's it's on YouTube, by the way, not the actual incident, but like things oh. talking about it. <laughs> I was going to say, Jesus was, Christ. <laughs> but yeah, no, they use like cranes and stuff. And like they built it with giant logs. And these are all just kids, college kids doing this. A like, this isn't like they hired professionals. Yes. I mean, that's the part where, like, you really should be like, come on, people. Like, we, maybe we should not just have, like, you know, random people using heavy machinery that are also probably drinking, too. So, maybe I'm not. sure at least one of them said, what's the worst that could happen? <laughs> not sure somebody did. What's the fire going to do? Kill us all? <laughs> but, yeah, it's. I, I never even knew about it until Carrie just was talking about it because it worked on what we are talking about with Andor. But, yeah, it was just this weird thing that they... That they do down there and that they don't do anymore, thankfully. Yay, sports. And I don't follow sports. I mean, I the like I sometimes I pay attention to what the Vikings are doing, I guess. But like people here, oh, they're gonna make their they ain't going nowhere. They're, they'll make the playoffs and they'll lose. It makes people fucking crazy. Sports for whatever reason. 
Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. It really, I do love sports documentaries, though. Like, I was watching the Aaron Hernandez documentary at some point not too long ago about that guy who murdered. He's, hey, the only player in history they know about to murder two people and then go win a Super Bowl. Oh, boy. Oh. That we know about. Yeah, that we know about. <laughs> and there's other people, I'm sure. But, yeah, he murdered two people and played a whole season and then murdered another person. Like yeah, that, do. That's, yeah, it's a wild thing. Yeah, oh, God, it's so sloppy, though. Like, when you look at that murder, like, yes, it's let, let's rent a car in my name, take the guy out a few miles from my house, throw out the body in a gravel pit. <laughs> Drive back with the rental car, and then we're gonna, you know, we're gonna leave some gum that we chewed on to that's at the crime scene and in the car. And then we're gonna leave some bullet casings in the car too, just because, you know, they'll never know it was us. Wow. Yeah, it turns out taking a lifetime of hits to the head does not lend itself to like smart criminal activity. <laughs> mm-hmm. Pretty much. I mean, that that's really yeah, a lot of what that documentary is about. But yeah, it was, and it was the Patriots, of course, because it's the Patriots. Yeah, I don't talk about sports a lot. I don't because I don't follow anything. I know the World Cup's happening now, or by the time you hear this, it just ended because it ends tomorrow. I saw some article where some European country managed to get through World Cup without any rest for the first time ever. Oh, you reminded me. There's a documentary on Netflix about FIFA that I watched that's really, really good that goes into how corrupt FIFA is at times. Oh it has been. Is it because of EA? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's they were just really like people like, oh, you want the World Cup in your country? Well, what are you going to give us? Huh? Like, oh, we'll donate, a, you know, a million dollars for you to put towards your soccer program in your country. Oh, great. And none of that money will ever see anything but your pocket. Oof. Oh, there were, and there was one guy who didn't. The reason why they got a guy or they started the whole process, the, the police did, because the guy didn't file his taxes for 17 years. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That was smart. Yeah, and then they figure out, yeah, there's a lot of money he was taking in bribes and stuff. And then they found out everybody, like, oh, fu- everybody was fucking corrupt. Like, and, and it's, I mean, it still is, it sounds like, but oh, really fucking corrupt people. But money does that. Yay, sports. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, there was a big thing about Qatar, because Qatar hosted the World Cup in, tw- in 2022. And it was not like there other people had better bidding than Qatar that could that could host it. And Qatar couldn't, couldn't really host it, they were worried about. And the, and the conditions are, are hot and everything. But. People pay. They're they're pretty sure they pay. You know, people paid people to vote for it. So it was. It's yes, interesting. It is. Definitely worth yeah. watching if you like sports, or you don't like. Or like me, don't care about sports, but love documentaries about sports. Go watch it. I don't like either of those things. Yeah, <laughs> I don't recommend it for you. Go watch Thor. Go, go watch Thor: Love and Thunder. Oh, and fuck hate, no. Hate more things. <laughs> Turn off the TV and stare at it for two and a half hours and call it good. <laughs> All right, anything else you guys want to mention that we should talk uh, about, or we wrap this up? Like I'm good. Um, yeah, I think I tried, I started Dragon Quest nine, but oh. Ooh. I moved on. Like that was on my phone and then I just moved on to Marvel snap. I may go back to it though. Dragon Quest. I got fun. to the very last boss and died for the first time and never went back to it. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I can't. If I get that far in a game, I have to, Oh, I have to. Oh, I've done it several times. I got to the last mission of GTA four and kept dying and put it down and never went back. Never played that game yet. It's all right. I own four copies of it. You think I would one day? I'm not kidding yeah. either. We'll have to do GTA at some point. Is there? I'm gonna replay like Vice that? City. Same. Was, right. The uh, the the uh, DS game, the Chinatown game, is like surprisingly good too. That's mm-hmm. what I hear. I owned it at one point. It's good. I have yeah. it next to me, technically. <laughs> never played it yet. Is there anything on like the Immediate Horizon that you guys are looking forward to? Yes. But immediate horizon, as in what I'm going to make myself play in a couple <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Yes, coming out, no. But I can tell you what I'm excited to play this on the on the show before we wrap this up. I'm playing Resident Evil Three Remake soon. I'm playing Mega Man Eight for the first time. Also, I'm not really game. excited for that. It's fun. Crusader Senti, I'm excited for. I'm playing Mirror's Edge. I'm excited to finally play Mirror's Edge. Also, yeah, this crew for Creator Senti that Blake brought up earlier. Mm-hmm. And then Sailor Moon, another story. I'm going to finally play that game. The Super Nintendo Sailor Moon RPG. I've never played. Hopefully oh, it's good. Oh. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. Like, I'm excited for stuff next year, but it, it's all later in the year as far as I know. Hades 2, Diablo 4, Spider-Man 2. Diablo 4 is actually coming out? Yeah, June. Oh. June 6th. Hades 2 is, a, is definitely. Oh, God. Not the list there. I just bought I, Hades. I'm I, got, I got super into <laughs> Hades this year, and man. Then they announced two, and I was like, "Oh, this is just perfect fucking timing." Yeah, super, yeah. Uh, super Giant Games is just like the fucking. I mean, I I don't play new games. I don't care about stuff that comes out. I just care about stuff that I can get around to for the show. That's fair. Yeah. I but I also never cared about new games really for a long time. But even if I didn't have the podcast, I'd still be playing older games. I just don't. I don't don't care about new stuff usually anymore. That's what great. What's great about stuff like Chain Echo is because you could still put it on the show even though it's new, but it's got that old flair to it. <laughs> Put it, I, 
Yeah. Oh, we also were talking about the hell. I think RE. No, Metroid Dread's the newest game I played on the show because RE3 remake came out before Metroid Dread. I think. No. Oh, yeah. I'm excited yeah. to find. I'm excited to play that. Like I, I that, after you talked about it, you got me interested to actually want to play it. I love that Turkey Please was the newest game we played on the show for like a full year. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, RE3 no, is good. I'm, I'm really excited to play Resident Evil 3. Like I, I, because I two was so tough, and then you told me a two like three does not have that horror. So mm-hmm. and it's short. Yeah, I, I left two pretty pretty unsatisfied, but three three really surprised me. That, that's why I'm. That's why it's on the show, and that's why I'm. I'm like fuck it. Time to. Plus, I'm trying to I'm trying to do some more Resident Evil games. I mean, I I played Revelations. I, I'm I might do Revelations <laughs> two next year, maybe just because uh, I'm not in the mood. Was, but I I enjoyed it. But I know you did not. <laughs> That was a good episode, though. We're really divisive on it. Mm-hmm. All right, I think that's everything we need to say. Blake, do you have anything to plug? No, no. Just happy okay. to be here. All right. Mike, you don't, right? No, yeah, just Twitter. Uh, Kaidenzang, K-I-D-A-N-X-A-I-N. Doing the guy game from Mass Effect everybody, lo- everybody saved. <sighs> Same name. Man, that stupid... I, I had that name since I was 15, and then they had to go and name that asshole <laughs> character. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, you can find out what are you playing? Every single month we do one of these. We've been doing it now for well over a year, so definitely go check out all those. It's very, and we have over two, 400 two other years, episodes. Isn't it? Hmm? I feel like it's two years. Is it two years already? I think so. It's been a while. It's shortly after I started the first time. Oh, I can't remember. I, I, haven't, I don't remember. <laughs> I just know I've been doing it. I know I haven't missed a month since it started. I think April will be two years. So it's yes. over a year for sure. I think it's getting close to years. We've been doing I've one point. made. To 2021 and is the first one I have in my notes. So, okay, Fair so right. yeah, May 2022 would be a year. So yeah, we're almost year two, almost two years worth. Yeah, we're together. Year and a it's half. in year two. Does that count? But not 24 episodes. All or right, phase, <laughs> so phase two. Over 400 other episodes you listen to. You can find everything on Podbean. If you can't find what you're looking for on Spotify or iTunes, we do movies, comics, video games, TV seasons. I do whatever the fuck I want. Go listen to giant content that we pr- that's produced. I want to give a shout out to my awesome intro and outro, courtesy of Helena at Hell Half Sphere. You can follow her on TikTok. Also, want to give a shout out to buddy, my buddy Bill Tucker. There's his own podcast, A Gamer Looks at 40. You can have to go see him and listen to all his content, which is much more professional than what I make. Very good. He's also the guy who suffer, one of the guys who suffered through me for all the MCU movies. He's still suffering through, and he'll probably be the only person that watches Eternals, that covers Eternals with me, because I doubt anyone else will volunteer for that crap. Oh, God, no. But he, he said he'll do it. So it'll just be me and him probably bitching for two hours about Eternals. That'll be fun. That movie's all right if you watch it over the course of a week. Just don't watch it, it once. So <laughs> I watched it, of course, in three days, and it wasn't bad. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on YouTube. Also, we do have a Discord. You can join our Discord and chat with us. And if you want to support the show, we do have a Patreon. Right now, it's, you still have another week. Wait, no, this is, yeah, you, you still have more time than that. You can vote in our Patreon right now. It's Mike's Christmas gift, I'm calling it. You get to vote for either Spider-Man 2002, Main Spider-Man 2, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, or Eternals. Which has zero votes, surprisingly. So <laughs> it's just stuff I need to get done for the MCU, essentially. So I'm like, eh, I'll just throw it up, make a random poll for me. So definitely go check that out. And we will see you guys all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.